Hey guys, today I'm going to be building a fence for our deer fencing that we put up the other day. Um, I've got to build a fence for the back. I'll probably do something simple for that. But for this one, what I want to do is uh, use some of this reclaimed wood that I have. And by reclaimed, I mean I reclaimed it from the kids' old play set that we built like, uh, I don't know, we must have built that thing about 12 years ago. Yeah, probably about 12 years ago we built it. And then we took it down whenever we moved out to the new house. So I've got a bunch of, um, well, I've got a few four by fours and some two by fours and some uh, one by material of this old cypress. And uh, cypress is a great, obviously it's a great wood for outdoors. So this is gonna have some uh, screw holes and nail holes in it and everything, but it'll work perfect for this. I've been trying to figure out what the best way to, to build this is and I'll just lay that down. And I thought about putting the post in beside each one of these posts, each one of these T-posts, but I'm thinking the best way to do this might actually be to take the T-post out and then just um, put my four by fours in and attach the welded wire fencing to the four by fours. So I think that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna cut all these zip ties. This is why I use these zip ties because they're so easy to take back off if you wanna change something. I think this is the better route to go because if I try to dig right next to these T-posts. It's just gonna make it a major pain. Oh yeah, there we go. Basically, I can just dig these in the same spot. One thing I wanna make sure of is that I don't get the dirt mixed in with the wood chips. because that's something you're supposed to avoid with this uh, Back to Eden gardening is you don't mix the wood chips in with the dirt, they just sit on top of the dirt. Get dog. Anyway, here at one, here at one fifty and a half, right there. Let's go back here again. Yeah, you're about five inches. I'm gonna take it back about five inches back that way. Got my handy dandy post level. I'm not gonna put any concrete or, in, concrete or anything in this because I wanna take this up later. This whole gate, whole fence system is probably temporary until we put a nicer system in. All right, that should be good for that one. Do I love that. Yeah. There's a heavy load upon my back. No way to throw it off. For a second, I believe it's gone. I'm just a fool out of love. Okay, so that gives us 50 and 7 eighths at the bottom. 50 and 7 eighths at the top. And that means I'm gonna make my gate 50 and 3 eighths wide. And for height, I'll, it'll kind of depend on what I've got in my two by fours, but I mean, we'll probably go 
60 inches tall. Eh, maybe we'll, we'll go 59 inches uh, tall for the gate. Yeah, I'd say we have more than four inches. And I, can I dig with, do you think I should dig with this? Because I don't want to like get too many wood chips in the dirt. Uh, you probably use, need to use a spade to dig each one out. Okay. Look at you making progress. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to be the first row and you're supposed to separate them by like two to three feet. Mm -hmm. So, this is two flips of a ruler at 24 inches, it's two feet, right? Yep. Okay, so <laughs> please tell me. So, um, so that's going to be first row, second row, then third, fourth. So, we get six rows of potatoes here. Are these red potatoes or white potatoes? These are going to be the red potatoes, and we got a lot. I think we got an overabundance, so we're going to have to figure out somewhere else to put them. Okay, so you're going to do it with the eye up, okay? One of the big eyes up. Hmm? Yep, because that's where the plant's going to come out of. And we cut up the bigger ones, but these were the smaller potatoes. It doesn't go down any further than that. Okay, I'll have to make the holes bigger. Um, but these were small enough that we're just going to plant them like they are. So I got my potatoes covered up and I have two rows completely done. I'm going to have to get out here next, next week, tomorrow, whatever, and plant the rest of them. We got a lot to do, but I do have my garden stakes up. I'm so excited. They're backwards. Why are they backwards? It's showing up backwards for some reason. Red potatoes. Is that backwards? I don't know. <laughs> so uh, really excited to put those in. Last week, our local weather station mentioned that the weather pattern based on European models for our area was actually matching the weather pattern model for 1989. 1989 is when it snowed in South Georgia. However, since I just lost about four pounds digging those two holes, I don't think it's going to snow this week. I'm not a weatherman. I'm not a weatherman. But if I read the signs on my shirt, they say no snow. Here is my reclaimed to buy cypress material for the fence, excuse me, for the gate. Uh, <laughs> definitely uh, weathered. It's got at least 12 years of weathering on it. Like I said, there's a couple, I may be able to cut some of these spots off or I had some lag screws countersunk in here. But uh, it's pretty cool because it'll give us that aged look for the garden. All of this wood has a, uh, a big round over from where I routed it, you know, years ago. I'm gonna cut one side of that off so that I can join all this up together. So, oh wow. So I hadn't really given this much thought <laughs> before I started filming how I wanted to put this together, except I wanted to put it together simply. Um, I don't know if I want to do like a lap joint or a miter joint, but I think to keep it simple because the whole point of this was for it to be simple and cheap and quick, I think I'm just going to do a butt joint and uh, glue it and screw it and be done with it. One thing I do have to watch out for is since these are reclaimed boards is nails or screws. Uh, not really any nails. I know there's no nails in it, but there could be screws. I've pulled most of them out, but I don't want to hit one. Just 
just for to make it easy, I put those together, measure that. That gives me six and a quarter. Overall, I want 50 and three eighths. So if I take uh, a quarter off of three eighths, that will leave me with an eighth. That leaves me at 50 and three eighths minus six, minus six inches, 44 and an eighth is what I need to cut uh, my rails at. That's just how I do it. I like to separate it. I don't know. It's a, it's a measuring and math on camera. Math on camera, as Wrangler Star would say. Here's some sage woodworking advice for you. Some, a pearl of woodworking wisdom, if you will. Whenever you're cutting your boards, always make sure you keep your cut boards in one area and your uncut boards in another area. Because after I cut that um, rail to length, I realized, wow, the other end of this is perfectly straight also. And then I realized I had taken um, my style that I just cut and cut it shorter. So <laughs> luckily I have enough wood for, with the other two pieces to make it work. But uh, you see there I cut it off and I was like, what? Always, always keep your cut stuff separate from your uncut stuff so that you don't do that. I don't know how many times I've done that over the years. You get in a hurry and you do that. Another thing that'll save you sometimes is cut your long pieces first so that you know you've got all your, your long lengths that you need because a lot of times your drop pieces, you know, depending on what you're making, you can use your, your drop pieces to cut your short pieces. Um, you know, and in a situation like this, that can save you if you accidentally cut the wrong thing. Uh, you haven't cut all your pieces into shorts and, uh, and they don't have anything to cut your long pieces. All right, all right, all right. You ready to help me? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can help me. Um, well, let's measure this. Let's measure this and see what we got. You want to measure it? Okay, how, how, wide, how wide are we there? What's that say? 50? And... One eighth, two eighth, three eighths. Fifty and three eighths. Just what we want. So this is a drill press, okay? And what this does is, it's just like your handheld drill, but instead of using your hand to push down on the drill, you just turn that down, okay? okay. And this lets you drill like a perfectly straight hole, okay? So you can operate it, and I'll help you, okay? All right, so turn it on right there. Slowly push it down. Okay, good, keep going. And then grab the other one with your other hand, grab the other ball, there you go. Keep going. Keep on keeping on. There you go, right there. Okay, now you can slowly let it back up. Good for it. Good job. Muchas gracias. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that. Hello, <laughs> my love. You're done with the potatoes? You got all the potatoes in? We still have uh, some eggs. Yeah, this will be the front. Well, we'll have to go check out the potatoes then. Okay, yeah, now smooth it with your finger. You don't want to do that part? That's the best part. Here, can I wipe that on your shirt? <laughs> you could duct tape it, that is true. But I'm gonna let's see if I got this the right thickness. This clamp will hold everything nice and tight and won't let it um, won't let one piece go higher than the other piece. Does that make sense? Smear that. Smear that. No? Why do I have to do the messy stuff? 
why I had you out here to do the messy stuff. So, see it's a square drive, so the square matches up. Hold that. I'll help you. Okay, and then just kind of pull the trigger. Go brr, brr, brr. Just do like that. Watch, watch, watch how to do it. So if you do like that, it helps you not. If you just try to hold it one long time, it'll. Can I do it? Yeah, go ahead. Well, here, I'm going to help. Okay, okay. So just do like this? Yeah. Is it a square? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, right there. All right, let's do this one. Can I help you? No, I need to get it. Okay. Okay, right there. Good job. Tell you what, as much as it pains me to to just nail it on there, because I don't think that's very pretty, because of where because of where the um, because of where the grid pattern lays out. If I route this, then I'm not going to have anything to grab onto. There's not going to be anything there. I'm just going to have the wire sticking out, and this isn't rigid enough to stay in uh, that way. So what I'm afraid we're going to have to do is take some. Uh, some wire fencing nails, U nails I call them, uh, and nail this on from the back. What do you think, Blair? That's what we're gonna have to do. Daddy? Hmm? Do you have to here? I believe that's my drink. Don't drink all my drink. <laughs> Sorry, you don't have to hit it so hard. There you go. Smack it. There you go. There. Yeah, come on. Come on. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, great googly moogly. Okay, now move your hand. Now, there you go. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. All right. We'll call that one. We'll call that good. Let me get it started for you. Okay, you finish it. Keep going. Keep going. Right there, right there. We're good. There you go. My turn. Okay, a little bit more. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. All right. You got it. You got it. Yay, I love it. And so there'll be a little latch or something? Yeah, we're going to put the latch on. Do we have time to put the latch on real quick? Or gotta no, go? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be late okay. right now. All right, they got to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Bubber. Off to Girl Scouts. That is a complete reclaimed cypress wood, super simple DIY garden gate with deer fencing to keep the deer out and raccoons and whatnot. Probably not raccoons, never mind. Forget that I said that. <laughs>